everybody. Welcome to another episode of Embracing Wisdom with Stacey. That's me. And I apologize for, for not getting these podcasts uploaded every Monday. Life has just sort of been a curveball lately. And so I decided just to speak when I want to speak. It will probably be weekly, but it may not always be on a Monday. So I appreciate you just subscribing. You'll get the little notification. There's a new video. So there we go. So let's keep moving up those energy centers. We've already dived deep into the root chakra, which is our relationship to the greater, right? Where we fit in the tribe, where we feel security and safety, where we feel a steadiness and a groundedness. And when it's a little bit off, we don't feel any of that. And then we moved up last time into the energy center known as the sacral chakra. And this one governs more of those interpersonal relationships. So how we interact with um, the people closest to us, our children, our parents, our spouses, our partners, our friends, even our coworkers to a degree. But this really gets into that willingness to kind of roll with life and move through the obstacles, much like a river. The element for the sacral is water. So it teaches us to flow through life. A yoga practice specifically designed for the sacral chakra is going to be very hip and low back focused because physically that's where that one exists. Let's move up to the last of the bottom three. And the bottom three energy centers or chakras, whatever you prefer to call them, really have to do with the more humanness of us, right? The physical part of us. So the third energy center the element is fire. It's located in your belly. It's your relationship to yourself. It is self-esteem, confidence, personal power, relationship to you. How do you show up for you? And when it's off balance, we feel it. We feel it physically. We've got sort of that upset indigestion. Oh my gosh gut instinct we've heard it all right of this gut instinct we we absolutely know when we're either making a decision that is right because we feel so certain and we also know when we're making a decision that isn't right because we feel ugh, we feel upset we feel sick to our stomach okay so this one uh this one is the fire in your in your spirit, the fire in your belly. What drives you? What are you passionate about? What do you, you know, stand for? What where do you show up in the world in such truth? The the color for this one is yellow. It's a bright, beautiful yellow, and it's roaring, right? It's just roaring. And so sometimes we stoke that fire in a yoga practice by stimulating the body and ways of doing a lot of um, core work, core engagement, stoking the fire. We also have some pranayama practices or breathing practices that can really kind of bring heat into the body. And then in the opposite that, if it's too hot, if it's too driven, we're, we have some pranayama practices to cool down those jets. But let's think about this in terms of when it's off balance. I'm not a big one, like it's overactive, underactive. It's just off. When this one is off, we have trouble making decisions. We're wishy-washy. We're like, I don't know, what do you think? And we rely on external um, opinions to make decisions for ourselves. We want somebody else to tell us what to do, what to say, what to buy. So we're constantly seeking information outside of ourselves because we don't trust ourselves. We don't, we're not listening to the gut instinct. The other side of the coin, because there's always two, is if this one is off in the other way, we are overly arrogant, overly confident. We don't think anybody has any clue what they're thinking or doing or acting. We are the expert. Okay, so somewhere in the middle of that, we have a sense of self, we have confidence, we have we have the ability to make decisions because we're tuning into us. We are tuning in. We have such a deep connection to who we are and what, what we stand for, what our values are, what is important to us, the integrity that, that we have, the authenticness that we have, that we very rarely, when we are in a good place in this energy center, we very rarely second guess ourselves. We very rarely rely on other people's input to help us make decisions. We're, we just own it. We are in it. We are in it, in it, in it. Now, this one is important 
because when it is overbearing, the other two below it, the interpersonal relationships and where we fit in the tribe will often be impacted because nobody's going to want to be around that fiery energy of I'm always right. I know everything I'm better than. And so a person who lives with an extremely overabundant third energy center will often be very lonely. So when they're very lonely, then they have to recycle and reuse all of the stories they've made up about themselves, about how great they are to say, well, I'm better than these people. That's why I don't have any friends. Nobody can relate to me. Classic third chakra imbalance. Okay. So we've all met people like that. Maybe you're one of those. Maybe you know somebody. So to balance this energy center, we want to tune in to the color yellow, beautiful painting back there. We want to bring in a, a sense of foods that are going to be kind of cooling if it's too much, right? Some of those herbs like fennel and ginger. Ginger can be a little bit heat producing, but we just want something cool. Mints are great. So I'm, I'm thinking like teas, like mint tea, chamomile tea, um, fennel tea, something to just kind of soothe down the flames. Now, if you have no flame, no ability to make a decision, you are wishy-washy, then you bring in some of those heated things like ginger, cinnamon, cassia, something to stoke the fire. Okay, so that's thinking about teas, herbs, essential oils, things like that. A yoga practice to balance the third energy center is going to be very core based and it's going to be in the center of the belly. So a lot of plank poses, side plank, uh, crow pose where we're balancing, engaging the core, boat pose, anything that fires up the belly. And then to reverse that firing, we want to have a lot of time on the belly. So some of those prone positions, just um, locust pose. You can be prone tree, anything that's going to be grounding to kind of balance out some of that overbearing stuff. And then that, the affirmation for this one is very action-based because when we are living in our truth and when, when we are authentic to ourselves and we have a good relationship with who we are, we take action on that. We don't just passively sit by and let the world come to us or let people create the life for us because that always leads to resentment and being a victim. Instead, we take action. We have an idea. We, we cultivate the idea and we go for it. Okay, we go for it. And so the affirmation for this one is I do. I do. You could also be saying I do to yourself as if you are having a symbolic sort of marriage to self. I do. I do. I do. And so then you, you love yourself, you know yourself, and you go for it. Gemstones that really help support this one is any of the yellow ones. So citrine is probably the most common, the most favorable uh, gemstone or crystal. Here's a beautiful citrine tumbled. It's beautiful. Um, I have a couple of these in my, in my car, in my pocketbook. I really love these bottom three. And these are the, these are the energy centers that we we think of a lot when we just feel off, but as we explore the upper energy centers, we can start to see where some of our behaviors, choices, thoughts, ideas can be an imbalance in some of those more ethereal energy centers. So we'll get there, but here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about where you fit in the tribe. Do you feel safe and secure? Do you feel grounded? Do you have a healthy relationship with money? Do you feel earth and grounded? Do you feel like you have the ability to bend and flow in relationships or do you hold on to the past so much so that you will influence present relationships because of past relationships? That's sacral chakra. That's that unwillingness to bend. Do you hold a grudge? Do you feel like people are out to get you? Sacral chakra. And then as we move up to the bottom, of the, the last one in the bottom three, the solar plexus, which is what we're talking about today. Do you have a good relationship with yourself? Could you be alone with yourself? Do you need people around you all the time? Do you, do you look for input all the time? Do you second guess your decisions? I want you to think about those things. I want you to think about your relationship to the greater, your relationship to close people, and your relationship to you. I want you to think about that and chew on that. 
you can find a whole bunch more information. Or if one of these is like, oh my gosh, I need more, just pop down to the link below. It's in my storefront. You can pick and choose and learn in depth more about these. And there's also a digital download that's completely free that covers all seven in a general way, but with a lot of specifics, but it doesn't have a yoga practice and things like that. So you can look for that link down below, but let's keep talking about this because I think it's really important to understand ourselves beyond our physical, beyond our intellectual, and really start to tune into how are these energy centers that have been known about and studied for centuries influencing my present day decisions. So relationship to the greater, number one. Interpersonal relationship, number two. Relationship to self is number three. The next one is glorious. So stay tuned. Subscribe, hit a like, share this one, and let's keep talking about it. All right, I'll see you soon. Take care. Find some yellow today. Bye.